Welcome uh, to How to Close Three SaaS Clients in 10 Days with Paul St. Thomas of High Level. I am super pumped to have all of you guys on this today. And uh, I think it's going to be amazing. And Paulson, uh, if you guys don't know him, I'm sure you do. But if you don't, um, he is like the official training guy, sales guy, prospecting guy for the high level team. And he is amazing. Uh, so I'm, I'm honored that he agreed to do this here today. And I'm also honored that all of you guys hopped on to watch. Um, and if you guys stay till the end, we have a special gift for you. Also, we're going to give you uh, all of the prospecting scripts that he uses in his agency to get SaaS clients, as well as a free 30-day trial of SaaS mode, even if you're already a high-level user. That's right. Well, let me also give you guys some context to myself. I, I started off in healthcare as a healthcare executive. I ran small little hospitals like Moya Herman and Baylor, UT Southwestern in the Texas area. That's where I started my career, really, in radiology. Radiology is where basically you're in the imaging side of healthcare. And my love for imaging got me into photography and videography, and that turned me into liking social media. Next thing I know, I started getting pinged with ads about social media management, all this yada, yada, yada stuff. This is like 2014. So I decided to piss off my wife for the very first time and spend my first thousand dollars on a course that she didn't approve. Thanks to Mr. Ty Lopez back in 2013, I think. <laughs> and I bought that course and the rest is history. I came home like six months later, told my wife I'm quitting my healthcare executive career. Uh, my MBA is going to be a waste apparently at that point. And it, it was just, it was chaotic, right? It was chaotic for marriage life, family life. But I knew something. I knew there was something to this agency space. I knew there was a business here. I knew there was an industry here. I felt confident to jump off of that cliff and make an airplane on the way down like a lot of you. Now, I'll tell you, I struggled. I struggled so hard from 2014, probably for the first like two years, I would say I struggled. And I picked one of the most saturated industries back then as well, which was dental. And I thought, you know what? I can run hospitals. I can definitely run an outpatient clinic with one dentist. Boy, was I wrong. I was wrong because the the amount of prospecting that it takes to attract a dental client, right? The landscape of marketing is what I was wrong about, not the clinical stuff. I still think the clinical stuff is not that hard, uh, although there's a lot of complexity there. But long story short, what I want to share with you guys today is a little bit about the struggles that I went through for like two years before I got to five clients. That's reality. That was my first reality. By then I got credit card bills. I'm in debt and I'm trying to figure out what is this whole social media management thing. It, it was, it was tough. Okay. Um, then 2016 to like 2018, I realized, oh, I've got to have this massive sales machine, right? Everything is about sales. It's not about the fulfillment. So by then, Christine will probably tell you, you know, one of the biggest ways we you learn and grow in the space is by going to events. It, it's so big for me, right? Taking courses, yes, there's hundreds of bad courses, but I still took them and took action on the small things that I learned from it, right? Um, even if I found them somewhere or not, shared it with other people, it doesn't matter. I got action behind the content. So that was the second thing. But more I went into learning more about growing an agency, I realized everything was around sales. It wasn't about fulfillment, right? It's not about all the automations. And there's great people out there that provide so much expertise, just like Christine does, right? Um, but ultimately, your pipeline, the, the, the condition of your pipeline is what's going to really build your business, not your fulfillment. Your fulfillment doesn't even matter. Why? Because you have enough money if the client paid you to go get fulfillment done. If you charge enough, obviously, right? Right. So, so you can be resourceful there. But today, I want to share with you guys uh, what I'm doing today as far as my newest agency and what I'm prospecting, 
how I'm putting together my offers and things like that. 2018, Rob and Alex reached out and we were like, hey, Robin was, you know, really, you know, uh, what's his plate was really full with high level stuff. And then he had his own agency at the time. So I came in and partnered up with him and took over his agency, which eventually turned into the high level agency, right? Everything you see behind marketplace and stuff like that is all from our own agency. Now, what I'll tell you is this, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 was great, right? At that point, this last year, I got bored. I missed the agency game. I was like, man, I miss cold calling. I need to get my juices flowing again. So I reached out to a good old friend of mine in Canada, in Toronto, and I was like, Luis, what's going on? How's everything? I miss the agency space. Can I just close for you? I just want to close. I just want to be on calls, right? Doing the old demos, doing the old prospecting, just because I love sales so much. Um, then he was like, hey, man, I'm struggling. I'm in the restaurant space, but I'm struggling because of COVID. I got wiped out. Let's start a new agency together. So we decided to partner up and be 50-50 partner uh, of a brand new agency in the automotive space. Don't go funnel hacking me, right? automotive space. And I realized a whole new way of marketing, a whole new way of prospecting. So what I'm going to share with you today, I know that's a long intro, but what I'm going to share with you is all the mistakes that I made from the very first launch, then scaling the high level agency bump, you know, really me and Rob until almost like five, 600 clients. That's its own beast. Then the newest agency with less than five clients right now in the automotive space. You guys excited for that? Like, yes, I want to know. Cool. There's a lot of misconceptions about SaaS. I'll tell you that. You know, you really can't function truly like a software company. I get that. But why do I think agencies are the perfect SaaS providers? One, because you understand the industry, you're in the thick of things with that industry, right? Compared to like this big brand, software brand that's catering like a global crowd, right? You're in the thick of things uh, with the local client. That's one reason. Plus, you have marketing expertise where developers don't have marketing expertise, right? You as a marketer, you have that expertise. So guess what? If I were to start a business, let's say with Caitlin Cunningham, and she is the business owner, I can literally spend time with her, get to know her, jump on a Zoom call, well, where big Fortune 500 companies, brands cannot do that with that business owner. So that's a, that's a big competitive advantage. The next thing, you don't need a lot of clients to do really well. You're, you don't have big quotas. You don't have a big, massive a hundred man team behind you, typically on average, most agencies out there, right? So you, you're very agile and you can build up offers and all kinds of stuff. So let me start sharing my screen with you guys. And I'm going to go right through these slides to keep our conversation organized. By the way, this is not that formal to me, guys. Interrupt me anytime, ping me on there. We can stop talking about everything we're talk planning on talking about. We can talk about whatever you have going on. At the end of the day, I just want to give you value, okay? And by the way, we got nothing to sell you, just, just in case if you didn't know, okay? You guys are already paying us at some point in high level or you, Christine, her programs and things like that. This is for you to be able to take something away from today and go take action behind it, okay? So let's see how we can see if we can help you close three SaaS clients in the next 10 days. That sounds like such a strong statement, but I actually think we should have been even more aggressive in saying, let's have you close 10 SaaS clients in the next five days. But I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to be that aggressive. I, but I do think it's realistic for you to close some clients in the next couple of days and pay for your accounts. Wouldn't it be great if you can just pay for your accounts and you don't have any expenses? right out of the gate for SaaS, that'll, that'll be awesome, right? So let's go into figuring out how to do that for you. So three, three main topics I wanna cover, okay? Just to keep the conversation organized. How to get started on SaaS with, on your right foot, right? What, is, what do you do today? What is the next step? I understand the concept, Paulson. I understand that I should go sell. I understand all these things. What is my first step, okay? Second, I wanna talk about is prospecting. I want to talk about prospecting in four different channels, okay? Then third, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but 
I will talk about actual sales calls, how you should carry your sales calls. Okay. So step one, what do you do? Number one thing, you got to make some decisions. And some of these decisions are not that attractive. Like don't chase multiple rabbits at the same time, <laughs> right? What does that mean? You need to pick a single niche. Why is that so important? It's important because if you don't, you have to create multiple sets of marketing approach to attract multiple sets of prospects, right? So let me give you another example. It's okay if you decide to pick an industry with the intention that you're going to go into the sub niches of that industry, right? For example, if I'm going to focus on dentistry, right, which is the space that I used to be in, I'm not going to go after dentists, general pediatricians, you know, uh, orthopedics, uh, orthodontists, right? Invisalign guys. I'm not going to go after all of them at the same time. I'm just going to go after one with the intention that I'm going to horizontally expand. You guys with me, right? So it's really a temporary step where I'm saying, hey, focus on one avatar, stick it out till you start closing some deals, right? Stick it out until you close some deals. Even if it takes a couple of months, it's okay. It's totally okay. You're not missing out by not going too broad. There's such, it, it's a slippery slope to go broad and not capture really anything or not have any, you know, what's the word? You, you may not resonate with almost anybody. That's a worse scenario, right? So first things first, pick a single niche. The next thing you got to do is capture that entire niche. How many of you have already picked a niche? Give me a one in the chat if you've already selected a single niche. Okay, I see some comments coming in. Perfect. For all of you that have picked those niches, are do you have the data on that industry? Have you called a email broker? Have you talked to somebody that's going to scrape that entire industry for you? Have you signed up for softwares that's going to give you name, phone number, email of that industry? Now, why is that important? If you look at this whole SaaS launch as a science project, right? You have independent variables. You have dependent variables. You with me, right? The size of the industry and who's in it almost always won't change. Yeah, there's some new people here and there, but Ultimately, in, in the overall scheme of things, the, the, the data on the industry won't change. So what that means is it's good to just capture the data. You can run it on custom audiences, running ads for your guys. You can have your cold emails being sent out to that same list. You can have LinkedIn prospecting happening. And we'll talk about all these details, right? But ultimately, the second step is for you to just capture that entire industry. It, it shouldn't cost you more than $500 to do that, by the way. You can get on Fiverr and find somebody that'll simply just scrape that industry for you. The third part, this is where all my marketing, my, all my fellow marketing agencies are screwing up. And I love you guys. Guess what we're not good at? We're not good at putting up offers for ourselves. We're great at putting offers for our clients. What do we tell our clients every single time? Yo, your, your offer is not that strong, buddy. We, we'll, we'll be happy to guarantee some results for you. But just so you know, your offer is not strong. That's exactly what we say to our clients. But if you put a, put a mirror in that scenario and look at yourself and decide on an industry offer, it's very difficult for us to come up with an offer about the best thing that I see people do is like, man, I'm going to do a lead magnet, bro. Like, no, your clients don't want a lead magnet. Sorry. I'm a little passionate this morning about this, right? Like your clients don't want the least strongest offer you can possibly put together. We know it's not the strongest, right? So formulate an offer that <laughs> makes sense. Now, number four, you guys are going to laugh. And I'm not telling you guys to go sell something you don't believe in. I'm not telling you to unethically sell anything. But for right now, ignore fulfillment. Your fulfillment doesn't matter at all. Yes, I know. They have to be onboarded. Yes, I know. They have to get some value out of it. I get all of that. But when you break up this whole acquisition process into a streamline, the first thing you need to focus is the prospecting engine. 
not your fulfillment engine. Give me a one. Be honest here, guys. Give me a one if you are so focused on the fulfillment piece that it's been stopping you from jumping into the sales piece, right? That's literally what I found myself doing from 2014 to 16. Sounds crazy. I was trying to figure out all the possible dental offers out there. How do I win their hearts? That was my intention for like a year and a half. You, there is no right answer. It, there really isn't because what? The market is dynamic. It's constantly moving. It's constantly changing. So you don't have to chase the market either, right? What I want you guys to focus on is just the prospecting and sales piece. Now, once you start closing a couple of deals, right? You may want to buy whatever Christine has, right? Or any other ecosystems that are out there that's going to help you with your SaaS launch or launching yourself. Within the system, there's already SaaS, what is it? So the plan configurators, right? That's going to help you set up. And your clients are going to tell you what's wrong with it, what's good about it. And you can formulate your fulfillment as you go. So, before I go into offers, exact offers that I think you, a lot of you should run, right? Here is a pricing model that I think a lot of you should consider. I've been hearing a few complaints about some ecosystems and brands out there that are giving away high level. But reality is that most of you don't understand the business models behind it. Here's what's really happening, right? How many of you guys seen like lifetime deals? How many of you seen high level out there for $10 and you're like, dude, why is this guy undercutting the market? But in reality, most of us are not really paying attention. Like, did you actually go buy everything and confirm what their real offer is? When we look at these ecosystems, there is a significant difference between a gateway offer and a core offer, right? Your core offer is the 297 setup with 297 monthly. I, I recommend 200 to 500, right? And the reason why I don't recommend people going below that is because most of you haven't ran paid ads yet. You'll see how expensive paid ads become. So you wanna you know, set up that margin for acquisition in paid ads. So that's why I think you should charge somewhere around 200 to 500. Otherwise, if it's below that, you're you're going to eat into your that initial first month's income, right? So anyways, you have the core offer and you have the gateway offer. Your marketing is going to be all around your gateway offer. Right? That's where you get agile with your marketing. You guys with me so far? Is this making sense, right? I'm assuming most of you are familiar with the SaaS model and why SaaS is important. I don't want to talk about why SaaS is important for your agency. Anybody needs me to clarify that? I'm going to assume most of you understand SaaS. You're just trying to figure out what to do about it, right? Okay, cool. All right, perfect. So you have a core offer and you have the maintenance offer, right? Maintenance is where you can sell your professional services, I'm not saying stop selling your SEO and Facebook ads and Google ads. I'm just saying don't depend on it anymore like we normally used to in the, in the agency space. Your book of business is not healthy with just professional services alone because SaaS clients typically stick it out with you for many years, right? That's the difference. It's subscription versus retainer. Netflix will win over all of our agencies. Why? They have a subscription. Right. So you th there is a reason why SaaS is so important to your agency offers. So let's talk about some of the latest gateway offers I've seen. Now, remember, this is where you got to put your real marketing hat on. You know, those psychology books you read about influence like back in the day, like that's where those books come in handy. And you've got to put together some creative offers that make sense for your industry. OK, don't take everything that I'm sharing and just think you're going to plug and play and make it all work. It's not going to be relevant for every industry. But let me just share with you guys some of the recent gateway offers I've seen, right? This is basically the entryway for somebody to jump in. So one of the recent ones I've seen, hey, Christine, I'm shutting down my agency. I'm giving away all my funnels and ads. Only thing is you got to self-manage. 
here, here are all my proven ads. Here are all my proven funnels. And this is something I'm actively running with my own agency, the new agency with Luis. So guess what happens? These people jump in on the phone call, guys, and they're like, yeah, you guys do marketing stuff. Yeah, I got the owner of the business asking me about marketing stuff. That's where I want my sales cycle. We'll figure out which offer makes sense. But those phone calls ha are happening, right? So it'll say 297 self-managed marketing system, right? Or my ads will say ads and funnel giveaway for the automotive industry, right? Whatever industry you're catering to, right? And when they do jump on a call, you can tell them, hey, guess what? Here are our proven ads and systems and everything. You can take it, Andy, run it however you want to. You need any kind of support, reach out to us. No problem. Take it. Oh, you want the latest stuff? You want the good stuff? Oh, you want the latest stuff? That means it's 1597. That's where we do this month's stuff. That's 2021 stuff. But you want proven ads? That, that's going to get you somewhere. You can self-manage it. Here they are. Does that make sense, guys? You guys understand the difference, right? Now, when they do sign up for that, guess what happens? Pay for the system so you can handle all these leads in one place. That's 297 So all of a sudden, your gateway offer is ads and funnels, right? Don't get this confused with maintenance offer ads and funnels. We're not talking about new ads and funnels. This is you giving those away in a little library, right? And they go into a core offer pretty easily, right? And if they fail at it and they're like, hey, listen, this is too much work. No problem, Lance. We'll just handle it for you at $15.97 a month. And matter of fact, you won't even have to worry about just having the proven ads. You'll have the latest ones too. Right. And this is an interesting one. The second one, and I saw this with authors. I, I saw a young lady run this with authors and coaches, where it's a newsletter email campaign that she does on a monthly basis. It's $50. $50, Matthew, I'm going to run all your newsletters for you. How many of you guys enjoy Christine's uh, emails? Right. Like, I, I think I get one once a week or once every two weeks. Right. Right. <laughs> What if you offered that to a business owner? Hey, listen, you want to talk to your community and stay in front of your audience, stay in front of your, you know, your entire ecosystem. Every single week, we'll send out newsletters on behalf of your brand. It's $49. Oh, cool. You're starting to see leads coming from there. You're starting to see inquiries coming from there. No problem. We can set it up for $200 a month. Here's where you can handle all those conversations. So you see how you take a gateway offer. And remember, these are dynamic, meaning these are cycling, right? They're going to be changed. Every single quarter, we have new offers, right? And you, you can change it based on your industry. Here's another one, a third one that I can tell you, it's really effective in highly saturated industries. Like a lot of you that are going after your chiropractors, a lot of you that are going after your realtors, like those highly saturated industries, the appointments work. Hey, can we, can we just jump on a quick call? And first of all, what I want to do with you, Matthew, is give you 10 calendar appointments. That's all I want to do. I don't want to sell you anything. I'm going to give you 10 calendar appointments. And after that, can we talk about marketing? So what do you do? set up their system, run their list with a decent offer, react, you know, bring them back in, right? And set up set up an appointment for them, right? It's not hard to do, right? So that's another one, especially in saturated industries. The lifetime feature deal. This is something that I've seen a lot of big brands in SaaS already that are using. They'll say, hey, here is... Um, voicemail system for $50 one-time fee. If you're prepared to turn off voicemail system for the rest of the way, then that would make sense, right? There's another guy that sells just the dashboard. You know, the dashboard that just handles, that just shows like basic numbers, the high-level dashboard. They give that away as a $37 offer. Lifetime deal to a CRM system. Here's how you can handle all your finances in one place. 
right? Here's another one that I am thinking about running myself. I haven't ran this yet, just so you know, but I do know two other agencies that are running this. Tim, Mr. Miller, guess what? Thanks for jumping in. I'm going to just give you a website for the first year. Any questions? You don't have to pay $5,000 anymore at all. By the way, you want to handle all those leads that are coming in from your websites? Yeah, that's going to be 200 bucks, buddy. We, we'll help you handle all of that. You see how you take a gateway offer and you turn it into a core offer. This is the gap that I see everybody fail in SaaS. Most people are not able to connect this gap of a core offer versus a gateway offer that makes sense for the industry. So you really have to put your marketing hat on, guys, right? And think through of what your audience is wanting. The whole idea of hacking, duplication, copying, none of that is relevant anymore. You, you need to really focus in on your audience. Is this helpful? Sorry, I'm a little loud. I really am passionate about making sure you guys are successful. Believe it, right? So this is how you got to get creative. And that's all I want to say when it comes to an offer. Most of us are missing an offer when it comes to SaaS. What are we doing? Hey, man, core offer 297 setup with 297 monthly is not working. Yeah, it ain't supposed to work. It wasn't meant to work. You need to resonate with the crowd that you're catering to, right? And I don't even know what to tell you if you're catering to five different crowds. Like I can't even help you, right? Because now you got to come up with five sets of gateway offers, right? With marketing behind it. Was this helpful? Give us a one if it was helpful. All right, cool. I love seeing engagement, guys. It helps me go, all right? Christine, feel free to jump in anytime. I'm just, I'm just rolling here. You're doing great. I think everyone <laughs> loves it. We have 121 okay. people on here. I thought we were going to break Zoom today. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep the man pedaling. <laughs> so, so offers is the first thing. If I were to go to this topic of like how to get started, offer, fix your offer. Most of it is garbage. I promise you most offers that I see is garbage, but there are a few people out there that are getting creative with your gateway offer and test it out. It ain't going to be all perfect the first couple of times. Test it out. If you have one gateway offer, it will change your business forever. I promise you. We have see the numbers. We see Stripe accounts getting ding, ding, ding notifications happening all the time for a lot of people that have those gateway offers, right? Prospecting with four social media channels. So let's talk about that. So Let's see here. Where was I? Right here. So the four main ones that I personally am using right now with the automotive space is cold email, Instagram and Facebook DMs, because there's a limit to it. You can't do too many, right? Paid ads. Yes. Don't overthink it. I know it's hard to run your own ads. I get that. It's different when it's your own Visa and MasterCard. I get it. But if you have an offer, if you have a good gateway, it'll work. I'm running it myself. I can tell you it works, right? LinkedIn. So now, first thing you want to ask yourself, guys, is where is your industry hanging out in? My automotive guys don't hang out in LinkedIn, right? So you got to think of blue collar versus white collar, right? LinkedIn is great for those white collar industries, right? And then you got a few in there like real estate, a few in there like medical. They may or may not hang, in, hang on LinkedIn actively. But if you go after industries, pay attention to where those people are hanging out in. It doesn't matter if you take my cold email and convert it to your industry. Let's say some of you, if I'm in the contractor space, dude, I am pounding Craigslist. I see so many contractors go in there and post about what they can do. Why in the world would I not opt into all of their stuff and be like, hey, I can help you do it better way, right? Alignable is another one, right? Thumbtack is another one. There's, you got to figure out where your crowd is hanging out in, right? If you're in the interior design space, which is a hot industry, by the way, 
Um, you got to figure out where are those events? Where are they hanging out and where do they get together? Right? Like you got to be creative in where those channels are. But these are the ones that work for me in my industry today. This may not work in the next six months because the markets are ever, they're moving, right? How many of you guys get tired of those LinkedIn messages? I get hundreds a day. Like, I'm like, yo, these are all automations. When's the last time there was a human being on LinkedIn is how I feel. Everything is an automation, right? So you got to pay attention to where you're spending your time in. Now, there is also another factor to this that you want to pay attention to, right? If your pipeline is not that full, stop trying to get the most perfect lead possible with like this huge application filled out, right? You're forcing them to go through a webinar, then a VSL, then they have to jump into your Facebook group. Like stop all of that. Just get in front of them, right? Especially if you have no reason to start gating them, right? Now, how many of you guys understand lead gating, right? Lead gating is when you put more obstacles in front of them. So they have to give you more information in exchange to get through your cycle, right? So if I were to run lead ads, that's not that gated versus if I ran conversion ads, right? They have to go through a funnel of some kind, maybe fill out another form, and then I'll have them go through a calendar or a VSL. So pay attention to what you want. If you guys want to close three clients, ask clients guys in the next 10 days, take that gating off. Don't, don't over gate your channels. Just go full fledged in having those conversations. And I'll, sh I'll share my scripts with you so you could get those conversations going. But at some point, you're going to want quality over quantity, right? I get that, right? If you're already spending at least, let's say, 50, 60 calls a day on intros, like let's say those are the type of ranges you're getting, it's time that you turn that thing off. You need to be gating. You need to have better gates in place so people just don't jump in. They need to be more bought into what you're actually selling, right? And that's when you have an appointment setter versus a closer. That's when you decide, you, get, you know what? It's time for me to turn off my VSL and go right into a webinar because webinar means quality, VSL means quantity, okay? So decide on your messaging. So let's go right into messaging. But before that, let's see. Oh yeah, here's the thing. Just these four channels that I'm recommending is relevant for me today in August, you know, J July, essentially, like in 2021. In six months, this may change. But let me share with you guys this map real quick. And I know some of you guys have seen this, but the, the first thing you want to do is scrape your industry, right? Let me make this a little bigger. Right? These are the channels that I'm building out. So when I started this agency back in January with Luis, I was like, you know what, let's map out what our prospecting channels will look like. So you have direct mail that you, right? You can do outbound calls, direct mails, cold email, you link and LinkedIn organic, right? You can run a partner program, which is an affiliate program of your professional services, right? You can run Facebook systems. You can run Instagram systems where people are reaching out every single day at volume with VAs. By the way, guys, do not spend time prospecting. This should all be handled by VAs, right? Your time is too valuable where you need to focus on sales calls and intro calls. So our VAs handle cold email for us every single day. They handle Instagram DM for us every single day, right? One of the latest things that are getting, you know, a lot of traction is Lemlist. If you're interested in doing email yourself and you're not ready for a VA, maybe consider Lemlist, right? Um, but these are all the different channels you can set up. You can run paid ads, right? Which I highly, highly recommend. But I just wanted to share with you guys some of the main channels. These are the channels that we're working towards. At some point, we'll have more channels going. But with just these three guys, we're ranging around seven to nine leads a day. Cold email wise, I'm sending out about 500 to 700 a day. A day, daily volume, right? Instagram, we get around 20, sometimes 15, depending on those accounts. So we have three profiles. So we average around 45 to 50 DMs on Instagram. 
So you have to get like your uh, proxies and all these different things set up. I don't want to focus on the how. I just wanted to share with you on do, you know, just giving you the idea of doing this. Paid ads. Don't run paid ads if your offer is not strong. And I'm talking about your gateway offer, not your core offer. If your gateway offer is not creative and it's not strong, you're going to donate to Mr. Zuckerberg. I promise you. Get a strong offer in before you run it. But have three organic channels and two paid channels if you can. One retargeted. Okay? Does that help? Does that give you an idea of what kind of volume and range you got to set up? So let's talk about the actual messaging, right? You guys ready for the messaging? What should I say? Cool. So the four different main approaches that I take typically is this, I'll, I'll just give you a quick overview on all four of them, but I want to go into the partner approach. The student approach is the old approach. Uh, Christine, I'm pretty sure you remember this back in the Dan Henry days, right? Like, hey, I'm a university student. I'm learning this thing. Give me a chance. I'll run a trial, right? I'm, I'm sure that... Yeah, yeah. And they're like, which university? And you're like, oh, I got to Google a university name, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. but but that used to work and it still works in certain industries, right? Uh, the engineering approach is good for folks that are focused around a very high tech industry, right? So Christine, for example, she's focused on marketing companies. So she can focus on the engineering approach. Not all of us could, right? Let's say you're, let's say Lance Cook. I just see names here, right? I'm just calling people out. Let's say Lance is focused on the IT industry. Guess what? He can resonate with that. His crowd would resonate with that engineering approach, which is, hey, guess what? I built out a system for this industry. I want to test drive it with a company. And here's, here's what I'm trying to do, right? It's very developer oriented, right? It's good for those industries that are techie, right? Have you ever thought about building an app for your business? Like that's the approach, right? The referral approach is if you already have an audience, right? And you have some testimonials and results, all you have to do is reach out to those folks that you've already given results to and say, hey, listen, will you consider introducing me to XYZ? Will you consider introducing me to this person in the industry or that person. But today I want to mainly focus on the partner approach because one, it's what I myself and my partner Luis use in the automotive space. It's working, but it's ungated. Okay. Now let me help you understand what gated, gated and unga non-gated means, right? Non-gated means I'm going to give you a vague message that's going to create interest for you to just get on a conversation with me regarding almost anything and everything. It's not specific enough where you may know that it's around marketing, right? So if I have a new sales guy, guess what? I'm going to make sure my cold email guys are going to be non-gated. If I have a closer and he doesn't want to waste any time and just calling intros and he wants like, really solid leads, I'm going to make sure my approach is gated. So it's going to say, this is about marketing. This is how much it costs. Do you want to jump in? Like it's very specific, right? You guys following me on the non and gated, right? Cool. So some of you complain email doesn't work, but you're not even thinking in systems and structures like this quite often, right? It's not even taught. I'm just telling you from experience of us testing out different things, right? So non-gated, and I'll give you an example of a gated one too. Non-gated is going to go like this. Hey, John, seems like you have a decent location from the looks of it. People are saying amazing things about your business. And when I read, when I read, I should have said when I read, when I read through your reviews, right? I'm looking to partner up with XYZ industry, whatever industry you're in, right? To see if you can take on more of whatever products or services, right? So in my space, I'm an automotive. So what I usually do is, hey, I'm looking to partner up with an automotive shop in Houston, Texas to see if they can take on more lift kits, right? It's, it's product at the end, business in the front, right? Like that makes sense. You guys with me, right? And this looks like as if I'm just going to send you business. Like I have existing business to send you. 
who's not going to say yes to this message? If, if you're a business owner, it seems like they're just giving you a referral, right? So it's a little switch and baitish, but you jump on a call with the decision maker quite, quite often, right? At that point, you can change your messaging or turn it into whatever you wanted to turn it into, right? And this is a good opener. Remember, this is non-gated. You guys ready for a gated one? Here's what my gated one will look like. Subject line, service quote needed, as if it's an existing client, right? It's like, so if you're in the dental space, it needs to say patient confirmed. That's how I like my subject lines, right? If you're in the real estate space, I would say something like uh, closing date on three days, like closing, closing set on three days, right? It needs to be resonating to that crowd in their end result, right? But here's a difference. Hey, I'm hoping to talk to XYZ auto shop owner, right? To see if y'all can take on more tire jobs. I'm wanting to connect with the decision maker that can say yes to consistent referrals and leads. We prefer to send you products or services, right? Whatever line they have. And by the way, Christine's gonna have all these scripts, by the way, just, just so you know. No need to screenshot and waste your time. We got you right? But go through this. When you read through it, you'll realize this is all about marketing. So even at the very end of that messaging, I say, just to be clear on how we do this, we run and manage all your online marketing for you that are result-based. You see how this is very gated. It's very specific. We barely get leads on this compared to the other one. The other one is nice. It gets our juices flowing. It's like, oh man, we got 10 leads coming in, but none of them are qualified. But this one, if you get two replies, odds of you selling it is very high. So you want to decide whether you should go with gated or non-gated, depending on your sales process currently, how many messages can you field, right? That type of stuff. But in the beginning, keep it non-gated. Just keep it open for you guys to be successful in the next 10 days. If you use this message in your industry, you should get at least three to four messages a day if you're sticking with the volume that I recommended, which is 500 emails a day. If you don't have that, so some of you will tell me, hey, Paulson, I don't have all of that set up just yet. I had a, I had a slide that said, what if I don't have it? I can't find it, but it's okay. But if you don't have it, right? What you want to do is this. First of all, get a VA that's going to handle your prospecting. Multiple VAs, right? And it, like it costs me about less than $500 to have two VAs running full time. Well, one part time, one full time, right? And that's enough volume. I don't, I'm not going to be doing cold email myself, right? That's the waste of my time. Not because I, I want to spend it on other you know, revenue generating activities, not that I'm too good for it, but just, just to be careful in how I'm spending my time, right? Now, if you were to go through and put out this message in your, in your industry, let's say you go back to your high level account and you realize, you know, I got 200 emails. I got maybe 200 contacts. What do you think will happen if you send this out? Right? You should be able to generate at least 10 conversations off of this that are general, like they're just vague. I get that. They're non-gated, but it'll get you going. It'll get you launched. You should be able to close at least one or two clients from it. That'll pay for all your, you know, SaaS expenses, at least out of the gate, then you're dead even. And then you can decide, you know what? I can have this approach, that approach. It doesn't matter. I can just go all out. Right. So I just wanted to share this with you guys in, um, uh, and go from there. And here's here's the last thing I want to share with you guys. Crushing your sales calls, right? Understand your sales cycles in your industry. Most sales cycles last about 50 to 60 days. So the work you did five weeks ago is the work you're reaping and harvesting today. It's not from the cold calls you did yesterday. It's from the effort that you had about five, six weeks ago, right? So understand where you need to spend time and what you will get out of it. Number two is people don't have a problem being interrupted. 
right? How many of you guys pick up the phone call even when it's like a random number? We still pick it up. We still answer the person when they reach out. But you, within the first three seconds, you want to figure out what it's about. So when you do call these people, get right to the point instead of keeping your conversations vague. And when you do that and you figure out active buyers instead of just interest-based buyers, you have more at-bats, you have more repetition, right? You have more conversations that are happening and that's really how you're gonna do really well in sales, right? Now, one more thing I wanna share with you um, is the follow-up process. We all know following up is something we gotta do. But there is two different types of follow-up systems. One is a sales mentality follow-up. The other is an education-based follow-up. If you're running demos and you're trying to follow up with somebody, do not send them more results. Do not try to educate them about the industry. You need to specifically talk to them about the offer you presented. Hey, Matthew, what did you feel about the offer I gave you? I'm not going to be like, hey, here's my case study from two other automotive shops. Take a look at it. I don't need to win them any more than that they already have been won. They got on a demo call with me, right? And if you, one more thing I want to share is I had this question, and this is something Christine and I were talking about the other day. Should you guys do demos or not? Right? If you don't have a big audience, and also if you're selling professional services at the same time, do a demo. You'll be able to close bigger tickets. You'll understand your industry better, right? If you have a big audience, meaning at least two, 3,000 people that are constantly following you around, it makes sense for you to have a self-managed sales process. Run a funnel, run ads to it. Don't jump on a quick you know, random Zoom call. And that's only relevant if you're not selling professional services. So I just want to clarify that one more time. So lastly, I hope today, hopefully this was really helpful for many of you. Lastly, remember subscriptions are better than retainers, period. That's the whole point of SaaS. You don't have to depend on your $1,500 up and down clients anymore. And all of us know you can provide white glove services. They are still going to cancel for whatever reason. They have too many variables in these businesses that they will cancel, right? And the other thing is customization is the enemy of scaling. It's really hard to scale when you customize a lot of different things, right? We all know that we can cook a better burger at home than McDonald's, but we go there for speed, right? Some of us go there for cost, but most of us go there for speed right? So pay attention to that. Don't over customize too many things for your clients. And there is a difference between interest buyer versus active buyer, right? I don't want to talk to people that are interested. I need people that are ready and actively looking for a system, looking for a marketing partner, looking to make a difference in their business. So hopefully today, guys, you guys got a lot out of the session, right? We talked about how to get started, the key thing is to figure out your gateway offer. We talked about prospecting channels. I shared my four prospecting channels that make sense and get a VA to handle all your prospecting for you as quick as you can. I've shared my script with you on the partner approach that Christine will have, right? And then when it comes to your sales calls, it's repetition. It really is repetition. But a lot of us waste time talking to interested buyers instead of active buyers that are constantly looking for something, right? So that covers a lot of what we wanted to talk about today. Let's see. All right, cool. Christine, it's all yours. And I'm muted. Hi, guys. All right. So um, we're going to get to how you get the scripts in a second and the Q&A in a second. But just real quick, if you guys love this, put a four in the chat. If you love it, but you don't know where to start, put a six in the chat. I want to see how everyone's doing and how everyone's feeling uh, before we continue, kind of gauge the audience a little bit. Awesome. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, Paulson, if that's okay. Go for okay. it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. So for all you guys who love this content, but you want to take a next step and go a little bit further, 
I have a super exciting announcement. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about an upcoming event that I'm hosting next month. Paulson's going to be there. He's going to speak about this. He's going to speak about SaaS, how to start a SaaS company. And maybe if we ask him nicely enough, he'll even do a demo for us at the event, the perfect SaaS demo. Um, so if you guys want to come meet us in person, okay, and have us hold your hand implementing what we discussed today, you guys, I only have five, I literally have five tickets left to my event next month in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, okay. So if you guys like the Smoky Mountains or you're in the Tennessee area or you just want to come and meet us and have us hold your hand, guys, I'm hosting an implementation workshop, okay? We're gonna actually do the thing, get everything set up in one weekend, all right? And you can come ask as many questions as you want because we're gonna be there to hold your hand. So I put the link here on the slide, mastermind.christineseal.com. Um, it's $9.97 right now for a ticket and tickets are just gonna go up as we get closer to the event. We're only a month away right now. If you guys aren't sure and you wanna hop on a call with me, uh, comment ma hashtag mastermind me below, okay? And, uh, or just send me a DM on Facebook, all right? And um, I will uh, happily reach out and we can set up a call, okay? My calendar is full like this week talking about the mastermind, but I'm gonna make some spots because I really, really wanna prioritize you guys since you're, taking your time to be here with us today. All right. So just reach out, send me a message or hashtag mastermind me below to chat more about it. Okay, guys, I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. Paulson is an amazing speaker as you just saw. All right. So um, I'm really, really excited about this. Okay. Now two, all right, how to get your scripts guys. I think most of you are already in my Facebook group, marketing agency automation secrets. So all you got to do is say, I just watched a close three SaaS clients in 10 days masterclass with Paulson Thomas. Please send my free prospecting scripts. And if you could also put your main takeaway, okay, put your number one takeaway on this post so that everyone else can see it and everyone else can learn about SaaS as well. Okay. So make sure you go to marketing agency automation secrets post this and put your main takeaway. Then my team is going to reach out to you and we are going to send you guys the scripts. All right. Um, we may even, uh, I know we're going to do the replay. So if you guys want the replay, make sure that you post this in my group so that we can reach out to you with the replay. Okay. All right, cool. And then third, a lot of people have been asking you about this. Okay. So if you guys want a free 30 day trial, of SAS mode, Agency Pro 497 plan on high level, okay? Go to bit.ly slash queen SAS. Make sure you use this link because that's the only way that you can get a 30-day free trial of SAS mode, okay? So I want you guys to go crush your SAS. I want you guys to get three clients in 10 days, and I want you guys to be able to pay for SAS mode with that, okay? You should be able to with just one client, all right? But um, you get a free 30-day trial. And yes, okay, you can get the free 30-day trial if you already have a high-level account. Everyone asked me that. Can I still get, yes, you can, okay? I'm gonna this, show you how This is for the pro, right? This is for the pro this, plan. Yeah, this is for the pro plan, which is 497 a month, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. If you go to this bit.ly link, Okay, there's two options. Choose your adventure. Okay, so the yellow button is for new users. If you do not have a high level account, you can click the yellow button and sign up for the free 30 day trial. Usually it's only 14, but through this link, you're going to get a 30 day trial. Okay. Then if you're already an existing user, you use the, the blue link, excuse me, the blue link underneath the button. Okay. So um, already high level user click here, then there's a little form that you fill out and it goes to the high level team. They upgrade your account and you get a free 30 day trial of SAS mode, okay? So it's super, super easy to get that free 30 day trial. Make sure you use that link though. And again, it's down here, bit.ly slash queen SAS, okay? 
If there's any problems, questions, concerns, comments, whatever, feel free to send me a message. All right. Um, I, my son is actually working for me. So he is my appointment setter. He mans my DM. So it's a real person, not a robot. Please be nice to my child. Okay. He just decided he wants to be an entrepreneur. So it's, it's been a good learning experience for him. If, if uh, you guys got a message from me, it was probably him. He worked pretty much all night helping me get every messages to everyone. So um, make sure you, uh, you're nice to him, okay? So um, that's, that's about it as far as I have to say. I'm gonna keep the link down here at the bottom while we do Q and A. Um, and you know, if you guys, I, I really appreciate you guys being here, Paulson. I really appreciate you taking your time to create this for us. And um, I'm just so like, I'm just so grateful and my heart is full right now. So Aww. thank you again. Guys, any, anybody, if you're, if you have a doubt in your mind about that event, I promise you it's going to be epic. I'm going to be a speaker there. And I've already heard about some of the other speakers. There's some yeah. really big top dogs over there that are coming to just really give away some of the toughest lessons they've learned in business. So it's going to really change the way you do business. And I promise you, like I learned everything I know from events and courses and masterminds yeah. uh, and mentors, obviously. Right. But the events really take you away from that isolation mode of just like being at home, right. In your offices, kids and family and everything, but it really gives you a sense of belonging. It gives you a community to like really connect with everybody around in the same journey that you are. So I highly, highly welcome and recommend all of you to be there. I'm going to try to be there like literally from like Thursday to Monday. I'm trying to figure out my calendar uh, so I can actually spend a lot of time with a lot of you as well as Christine. So don't pass on this event, guys. And then also don't forget to take advantage of the pro 30-day uh, trial Christine is offering. You're not going to find that everywhere. If you don't know, <laughs> that's a rare thing. You can get that through Christine and we've set that up. Anybody have questions on some of the things we talked about today? I know we talked a lot about sales and prospecting and systems. I was trying to rapid fire as quick as I can so we can keep everything within the hour. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh my goodness. I see a lot of questions. <laughs> so many uh, questions. Would it help you if I kind of Yeah, please. Yeah. You okay. tell me which one I should address and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Um good grief. Um, okay. Some of these are for the event as well. Yeah, go for it. Um, oh Melissa's here. Hey Melissa, I'll see you soon. Melissa's already coming. Um, do you go over how to set up the onboarding automation? Yes, Chris, I do. I absolutely do. That's the whole reason I created this event because I know everyone is struggling with their automations and their onboarding. So that is definitely something we're going to go over. Okay. Um, let's see. What is already in agency mode? Okay. Oh, you like the agency pro plan probably? Yeah, he might be asking about what is SaaS mode. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ricardo, Moses. Yeah. 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 SaaS mode is where you basically can function like a software company instead of an agency within high level. Really, it's a billing play. We'll handle all your billing for you, subscriptions for you. Your features could be turned on and off. And ultimately the finances gets handled automatically. That's the hardest Sorry. part. Sorry, Paulson. I already know what it is. I was, I think that was a question for before when oh, got it. you were offering the pro plan. I was asking, what if you already have the agency? So you guys answered that question already. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Cool. Okay. No worries. Would it be a smart idea to upload scraped lists to high level and do cold email from there? No, you need a lot of volume, <laughs> right? You need five, 600 a day. So I recommend, so here's how I go about it. My cold VAs already know how to do this. I don't want to go train a VA. Neither do I want to learn how to do new things. I want to, I want to buy their skill set, right? Like I, so when I first interviewed them, I was like, hey, jump on a Zoom call. Show me how you send them out. 
they're like, well, Paul, I jump on my 10 Gmail accounts and I subscribe to all these shops so I can, you know, prime my email domains. And then I send out these messages after I log in. These cold VAs will know how to set that up. You, but, but I don't recommend using high level because you got to send out such a high volume. It's not worth taking a risk, you know, jeopardizing all your clients in one place, right? Pamela says, where did I get my VAs? VAs are the best source to find a VA. Ask them if you get one, right? That, so you just really need to get the first one, right? So the first thing I did was go to Facebook groups and I said, hey, I'm looking for a cold email VA, cold Instagram VA that can jump on a quick call with me. This is my budget at the time. My budget was $360 a month for that full time. The second one was 180. I was like, you know what? I can close one um, retainer and have no issues with that, right? I can get two or three VAs. And that's literally how I calculated it. And the first person, I mean, actually the third person jumped on a Zoom call and showed me when you jump on a Zoom call with them, ask them to log into the systems of what they've already delivered. They will show you if they know what they're doing or not. <laughs> Within five minutes, they will show you if they know what they're doing, right? Um, but but it's not hard to find a VA. You just got to really iron out and understand, you know, whether they know what they're doing. Most VAs are failed by the agency owners by lack of instructions or direction, right? Or the wrong expectation being set. Up front, I told them, hey, listen, I'm not tracking your hours. I don't care. If it takes you 30 minutes or 15 hours a day, I just want 500 emails outgoing. Like, I just want that result. So my guys probably spend maybe 45 minutes a day on taking care of me, right? But I know 500 emails is going out. That's all I care about. So guess what? I don't have to log into hub staff. I don't have to log into any of these screenshot monitoring stuff. Like, I don't really care. Like, if they just, I just want the results. So really it's an expectation that you got to set up front when it comes to VAs, but don't, don't waste your time prospecting. You need to be fielding calls. You need to be fielding those messages. You need to be fielding on the sales side, not the prospecting side. But the first thing you got to do is set all that up, right? It takes a little bit of time. Just, just go one at a time. Like you're not going to just set it all up, you know, six, seven channels in a month. It's impossible. So just go one at a time. Just focus on one channel. Get those conversations going. Let's see. Um, Christian, you were on which one? Let's see. Clinton? Was oh, it Clinton? I'm yeah. Lots in the chat now too. Clinton. Then I see uh, Ricardo Moses says, what's the best way to get the cold marketing done on the GHL platform? Don't want to flag on my emails. No, I don't use high level for cold email. I just use that for the systems for the clients. Uh, Lori Swift says, Paulson, what system are you using to send out 500 emails a day? My VAs literally went and bought you know, uh, I think it was like 30 or 40 uh, SIM cards in Philippines. Like they went and got numbers and they signed up for new Gmail accounts and they log into each one of those Gmail accounts per day, send out usually 10 to 15 a day from each email. Collectively, they do like 40, 50 total accounts. So in a day, I have that kind of volume, right? So it takes, they know all the stuff. Most cold email VAs know this stuff. They call it the GMAS method or Google method. Uh, it's very popular in that space. Um, are you doing this manually? Uh, manually on the fielding of messages, yes, right? So, so not, automa not everything is automated. Tim Miller says, um, can you give a quick example of a demo? Um, I mean, that's a loaded question. That takes me like a while. <laughs> Right. But ultimately, in my sales cycle, guys, I focus on four things stories. Right. I, I break my sales conversation into four phases. Phase one is a story. So I'm going to ask Aaron Bennett. Hey, Aaron, thanks for jumping on a call. I want to hear your story. I'm going to give him the microphone to talk. That's the first thing that happens. Next is numbers. I want to get to numbers. How do I get to numbers? 
I want to ask them about their volume. That'll lead me to the revenue conversations. You can never really lead in with revenue unless you have some really good trust. So I'm going to be like, hey, Brandon, thanks for jumping in on the call. What is your normal weekly volume like? Brandon's going to tell me, hey, I got 50 customers coming in. Perfect. That makes sense. Where do you want to be? Because I'm connecting current scenario with desired scenario right? Phone calls, Zoom calls, it doesn't matter. So numbers is the second phase. Third phase is the conditions. Hey, Nico, if I did this for you, how would that affect your business? It's the condition that I'm proposing. That's where I talk about my offers and all of that. Fourth thing, Matthew, how do you normally make decisions? Perfect. Meaning your wife don't have to approve anything? Cool. Perfect. Even better. Right? Like, that's that's my four phases in my sales conversations, whether I'm on an intro call, whether I'm on a Zoom call, whether I'm meeting with, you know, somebody at dinner with the enterprise opportunity franchises, I don't really care. My sales mentality is divided into four areas, stories, numbers, conditions, decisions. You can sell millions with that mentality. I promise you. Right. So so regardless whether you're in a Zoom one call close, two call close, on a funnel or not on a funnel. It doesn't matter. Sales is sales. People focus on the mechanism of sales versus the journey of sales. That's where they screw up, right? Um, so, you know, Tim, here's the thing. I'll take you up on this. If you come to the event, I'll do a live demo. How about that, Christine? We'll go over an event, a full demo, like a two-hour yeah. demo or something. Love it. <laughs> uh, Richard says, would solo agency owners be considered a niche? Um, no, that's so broad. Agency owners is broad. Trust me, there's SEO agencies, Instagram agencies, branding agencies, TV agencies, radio ad agencies, automation agencies. You want me to keep going? <laughs> it's such a broad industry, right? Um, let's see, Sarah says, how do I get the replay again? Probably on YouTube. Icon, Icon, hope you're doing well, buddy. Hi. The replay, let me just, let me just go over that one more time, if that's cool. Yes. Uh, do you me. post things on YouTube, Chris? I do. Okay. I haven't decided if I'm actually posting this on YouTube yet. Okay. Um, make sure that you post in the Facebook group, Marketing Agency Automation Secrets. That's my Facebook group, not the high level group. Okay. Yes. I just watched <laughs> I just watched the close three SaaS clients in 10 days masterclass with Paulson. Send me my free prospecting scripts. Also put your number one takeaway, your number one takeaway. All right. That's how you get that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Taryn says, um, what is the best niche data scraper to get the best info for your niche? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter about the source of how you scrape the data. The point is to scrape the data. I called email brokers in like a Facebook group and said, hey, who's got emails in the dental space? Who's got emails in the automotive space? Like 10 people reply. I jumped on a call with them. Hey, tell me why your data is good versus somebody else's. I found one guy, paid him 300 bucks. He sent me a list of like 15 or 16,000 automotive shop owners. That's one. Then I went on Fiverr and I found some random guy in Pakistan who said, I'm an automotive expert. Sure. What kind of data do you have? Paid him like $60. He sent me a list of like 6,000 or 5,000 people. Right. So then I called uh, one of my one of my friends in Houston, who is a shop owner, I was like, hey, where do you guys usually register yourself as like a business? Like, is there a directory? Right. I found a magazine that literally posts automotive shop owners in that space. So you got to be creative in finding the data. But yeah, Sherm says Lead Kahuna, Fresh Lead Finder, D7 Lead Finder. Um, what's Ross's thing? Lead Carrot. You know, there's, there's like a bunch of different stuff, right? But point is, that is an independent variable in the science project. That doesn't change, right? The dependent variables are your messages, your offers, your sales calls, your delivery, all that is constantly changing. But once you get that data, 
of like, let's say your industry is 60,000 people, you don't have to go scrape again. So it's really just a one-time thing. You can pound that list with new offers. You can pound that list with new emails. I loaded everybody into a custom audience on Facebook and we run ads to that same list. Right. So, so be creative in collecting that data, guys. Ethan says, how would you get your first three SaaS clients without spending money on a VA, ads, or et cetera? Those messages that I gave you, that script, you can manually message people on Facebook. If you by yourself messaged 20 people with your Instagram account, 20 people on Facebook, and if you're not getting at least five people responding, there's something wrong with your profiles, first of all. There's something in there that's alarming them, right? They're not understanding that it's, I would set up a social media profile. I would set up like a Facebook funnel. I would set up an Instagram funnel and then DM that way. Um, and and Lemlist, if you, Ethan, Lemlist, it's E-L-E-M-L-I-S-T. That's a really, oh, I think I sent it to Caitlin accidentally, Lemlist, right? This is a system you may want to pay attention to. It's a good system to manually send out emails. You cannot do a lot of volume, but it gets you going, okay? So that's probably my other way of getting, yeah, Pete, Pete says Lemlist rocks. I've, I've seen some creative things in there. Um, let's see, um, Taryn says, I would like to get the sales conditions. So Taryn's my sales cycle is divided into four phases. That's how I look at sales. That's how I was taught sales. That's how I function in sales. So my four phases in any cycle, regardless of the mechanism, is story first, number second, conditions third, decisions fourth. Hey, Caitlin, I'm glad we got a chance to connect. Everything makes sense. How do you normally make decisions on this? Kaylin's going to tell me, well, let me talk to somebody. Give me a day. Perfect. I'll talk to you in a day. A lot of you force a decision. Hey, you've got 72 hours, buddy, to take me up on this offer. Like you weren't going to give them that offer anyway. Right? Right? So they feel those energies. They understand that. But um Hopefully today was helpful, guys. I know we're going through some Q&As. Christine, I don't know if you see any other questions that I've, I might have missed, but I'm, ex I'm, I'm really excited for your group, Christine. I'm excited for you. I'm stoked about the event. It's going to be epic. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Yeah, I think I, I, everyone's just asking for like the demo, the templates um which we went over yeah um but yeah if you guys have any any event questions any um you know just just dm me okay um and then also just be patient with if you post in the group for your scripts just be patient okay because we have to manually send those all out so we appreciate your patience also it's going to take a while for the zoom recording to actually go get processed since it's over an hour long those always take quite a while <laughs> um yeah. but but all of you guys who are in the chat bot uh which i think there were 120 of you so i think that's like pretty much everyone who attended um i also sent you a message through my chat bot with the link for the 30-day free trial in it so and then i think there there was another one that went out about the event as well so if you guys need that link later if you want to think about it um, and you need the link later, it should be in that little chatbot message from me. Okay, it's under my name. Um, so I hope that helps. Guys, let's give uh, Paulson uh, a clap, an air, a round of applause, air clap. Okay, he did an amazing job. And Paulson, I love your energy. Um, and I, you're so captivating as a speaker. So I can't wait to have you speak at my event. I'm so honored. I'm excited. And yeah, I'm so excited. I, I'm like, it's it. People, I don't even know how to explain to people how much value there is without being too salesy. Like I'm trying myself to be not too salesy and be like, "Yo, you're not, you don't want to miss this." Like I promise you, this is one of the best events you're gonna see this year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, it's gonna be great, guys. So thank you again so much for your time today, everyone. Uh, just reach out any questions, okay? 
and have a blessed day. Thanks for having me, Christine. Thank you. Take care.